With the big success of Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, DreamWorks didn't feel like American box office numbers were as high as they could have been, and after the failure flushed away, DreamWorks parted ways with Aardman Animation. And that means it was now time for a new Wallace and Gromit adventure, so Nick Park started writing a whodunit story with the working title Trouble at Mill. This was later renamed to A Matter of Loaf and Death, the fourth and final adventure the dynamic duo would have before the unfortunate passing of Wallace's voice actor Peter Salas. I'm not gonna lie, to me this is the least memorable one, simply because I'm so nostalgic for the other three and the feature film. I saw this short when it originally came out in 2009, but didn't see it again until a few weeks ago, simply because I kept forgetting it existed, honestly. With that said, this is a great short film. Even though I'm not as emotionally connected with this one, re-watching this, I had an absolute blast. It was really nice to see these two characters reunite for one last 30 minute film. Remember when I said a close shave was the darkest of the three? Well, A Matter of Loaf and Death makes this the darkest of the entire franchise. For God's sake, they show a baker getting killed in the intro. Honestly, I'm so happy they took a much darker route. Ardman always finds a way to keep the series fresh. Here, we're introduced to two new characters, Pia Bakewell, a former pinup model for a bread company, and her dog, Fluffles. These two make for some interesting characters. Personally, I'm glad Gromit finally had a love interest. In a close shave and were rabbit, Wallace was the only one to get a lovey-dovey scene. This time, we get to see how Gromit would react to all that cute stuff. Like I mentioned earlier, this film is the darkest of the franchise. You see Baker Bob die, emotionally abusive relationships are happening, dogs are getting slapped, everyone is dying left and right, it's insane! But that's my favorite aspect of this short. There's a lot of dark humor and I'm a sucker for that. This was definitely not aimed towards kids, but rather the adults who watched Wallace and Gromit as children. This was a love letter and, in a way, a farewell to everyone who grew up with these characters. Also, let's just take a second and appreciate the animation in this film. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I thought The Curse of the Were-Rabbit was impressive, but damn, I love what they did with this one. You can tell that the directors wanted to push it further and further than what they did with the feature film. For example, here when Gromit reacts to Wallace calling himself a fruitcake, look at how smooth that is. Just, wow. Overall, A Matter of Loaf and Death is a great mystery murder short. There are aspects of the story that are very cliche, but I don't care, because the humor in this completely makes up for it. Of the four shorts, this is the one I found the funniest. I do recommend watching this, especially if you're a fan of Wallace and Gromit, which I imagine you are, or else you wouldn't be watching this video. But now let's get into some fun facts about the film. Because everyone loves fun facts, right? What does this scene with Gromit remind you of? In the beginning of the film, you can see a headshot of Feathers McGraw. There's also a ladder propped up against the wall to show that he did escape. Who knows, maybe that could have been the plot for the fifth short film or the second feature film. This is the first time these two were ever shot on digital video. Even though they never say it, you can tell Fluffers loves Gromit. Or maybe you can tell that because of this tree that says F plus G. I don't know. What is up with this Meetabix box? It was also in the wrong trousers. Actually, Meetabix is a direct parody of Weetabix, a UK whole wheat breakfast cereal. Baker Bob is named after one of the writers, Bob Baker. Lastly, in case you didn't notice or you're uncultured from the movies, this entire sequence is a direct reference to James Cameron's Aliens. So that's all the facts I have for this short. To conclude this three-part retrospective, I want to talk about whatever leftovers I didn't include in the other videos, one of them being the Cracking Contraption shorts. In between the release of A Close Shave and The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, Ardman Animations produced 10 Wallace and Gromit skits, each running from 1 to 3 minutes and each showing off a new invention of Wallace's. The first skit, The Soccer-Matic, was released online for free and the entire series was available to any paying subscribers. Later, some shorts were released on DVD with The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, then finally all 10 episodes were attached to the Wallace and Gromit and the Three Amazing Adventures DVD. The Cracking Contraption shorts were not directed by Nick Park nor Peter Lord, 
who would normally direct the shorts. And the directing chair was Lloyd Price and Christopher Sattler, who did a great job by the way. I think all of these shorts are great, some obviously better than others. Actually, instead of just saying that, how about I give you my top 10 favorite shorts, in order obviously. Alright, let's get started. Number 10, The Sockomatic. Maybe it's because I'm not in a soccer, like, at all. I enjoyed it, but this was the least good in my opinion. Number 9, The Christmas Cardomatic. I love the ending to this one. It reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, so there's that. Number 8, The 525 Cracker Vac. This one had me laughing from the first time I saw it, especially with this joke. Oh, wait. Help Romy, it's gone crackers! Also, I like the little western showdown. Number 7, The Snowman Otron. I love how Gromit has a sculpting gift and Wallace has to build an entire machine to create the most mediocre snowman. Great stuff right there. Number 6, The Auto Chef. The Dog Day Afternoon headline was enough for me with this one. Number 5, The Turbo Diner. This one has Wallace's dumbest invention. The fact that he added a quarter slot for the machine to work was silly, but even funnier was he added wrist locks. Like, why would you do that? Either way, the ending is really funny to me, so go give that a watch. Number 4, The Snoozatron. We've all had those nights where we can't sleep, and this over-the-top gadget of his is so unnecessary and extra that it makes the joke much funnier. Like, why does Gromit have to get up and put a sheep costume? Can't it just be a life-size plushie? Also, extra points to the teddy bear. Number 3, The Telescope. When penguins turn. That's something I want to watch. It looks scary for no reason. I just love the vibe I get from this short. Oh, and the cheese files just... Wow. Number 2, Shopper 13. This is the longest of the 10 shorts, and I love the build-up to it. As a kid, I would get really nervous watching this. And for what? All for some big cheese. The references to the Apollo 13 mission are also great. Oh, and Sean is in this. If you don't love Sean, then what in the world is the matter with you? And my number one most favorite short is a bulletproof vest. Can you guess why this is my favorite? Every time I think of these shorts, this is the first one that comes to mind. Why? Well, look at it. This is the closest to a horror movie Wallace and Gromit has gotten. I mean, I guess where I was technically horror. Anyways, Gromit is such a badass. Let's move on. So, that's my top 10. Let me know what your top 10 for these shorts are and why in the comments below. Moving forward, in 2010, Wallace and Gromit got 6 30 minute episodes in a mini series called Wallace and Gromit's World of Invention. The show dealt with different topics related to science. Some involved rockets, nature, the five senses, transportation, and other things. It was hosted by none other than Wallace, so in every episode we would get maybe a total of two minutes of screen time for these two characters, probably including the intro. By no means is this a bad show, in fact, I can see this being shown in classrooms alongside Bill Nye the Science Guy and Mythbusters. I would recommend this if you're a hardcore fan of Wallace and Gromit or if you're really into these science heavy shows. I still haven't seen all of them, but from the episodes I've watched, I can confirm that it's a fun little show so go check it out. Sadly, this was Peter Salas' last time playing Wallace before retiring due to some health issues and unfortunately passing away a few years after. There were also some random commercials that the dynamic duo starred in, my favorites being the End Power ads. Four of them were produced and if you have two minutes I'd recommend watching them. They're fun, creative, and it made me want to get End Power. Which I still don't know what it is, I'm assuming it's something with power? Nintendo power? Maybe. Either way, that's some great advertising. Now the only other thing I can think of that I missed are the video games. There was Project Zoo, which had you go against Brothers McGraw, Chris of the Were Rabbit, and a telltale game called Wallace and Gromit's Grand Adventures. Project Zoo and The Curse of the Were Rabbit both got okay reviews. The telltale game got average ratings, and honestly, I have yet to play these games, so I can't properly review them right now. If you do want to review though, let me know in the comments below, and I might make a separate video where I play these games and go more in depth with them. 
And that's it for my Wallace and Gromit retrospective. This took a bit to make, so I hope you all enjoyed it. With the death of Peter Salas, it seems like we will never get another true Wallace and Gromit short, but what do you think of the idea of replacing them? Do you think they should do it and keep doing more with the franchise? Or do you think they should just leave it as is? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I feel like his death was the death of the franchise. He was so iconic in the role that replacing him would kind of be disrespectful, but you never know what can happen. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more, please consider clicking that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell below. If not, then that's fine. Hit the dislike button and tell me how I can improve. Whatever makes you happy. But until next time, keep watching the skies. Also eat some cheese and crackers because um, that's healthy for you.